Hello and welcome to Exploited Crimes and Technology. My name is Opal Singleton and we come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. Well, I have several things I want to share with you today. My head is just spinning. I don't know which one to do first. First, I want to share some personal comments and thoughts because there is just so much going on in the world. And I don't know about you, but I um, I remember reading a book called Who Moved My Cheese? And uh, I just hate it when other people take all the control in life and you feel like you don't have any control. And uh, not that you really ever have any control, but you kind of like that feeling that you might have some control. And uh, in this place and time, you know, I I was um, sharing with my pastor the other day, Pastor Stephen Borst is my pastor, and I was sharing with him uh, how upsetting it is to see the things going on in our world of having so many people out there protesting and uh, carrying on and making all kinds of allegations that you say to yourself, where do they get that? Where's the truth of that? That they they focus in on one bit of facts and then they make that like it's reality when in fact my reality doesn't include those facts and uh it's a uh, it's all kind of disturbing and i was sharing with my pastor that i think people that are a little bit older are, are grieving grieving the the loss of truth okay <laughs> the loss of reality the loss of uh, concrete facts that are real facts, provable facts. And with all of this technology comes a huge amount of deception. And uh, I thought about that because I, I read this week that uh, they found out that the Associated Press, which the Association, Associated Press, I always thought at one point was the holy grail for reporting news. And not making news, reporting news, uh, and and trying to report it fairly. And now we're finding out that they were embedded with Hamas when they went in on October 7th, I think it was. And they were embedded there. They knew it was going to happen. They didn't report it. They participated. And they were there as part of it without ever alerting Israel so that they could save children or you know, protect themselves or or anything like that. And it, you you look at this and I you say to yourself, can you believe anything that's in print out there? Can you believe anything you hear? Can you believe any of these videos? You see these videos and they're all doctored up and you say, is this real or it isn't real? Uh, um, one of them that came out this week was that we heard from everybody that, uh, Olive Garden was going to close down all their uh, their uh, restaurants or stores, and I like Olive Garden myself. You know, don't you like that? You know that sausage soup they have that's really good. But anyway, I liked Olive Garden. I'm like, oh no, they can't close down. But then I start reading about the whole thing, and you find out the whole thing was a, a, a facade, a scam. It was buried on the 85th page or something of some article about all the places that are closing down. And they get around to saying they're going to close a few of their stores that are not all that productive. But it isn't like they're going out of business. And yet they said that as if it was real. And I, I was sharing with my pastor, I, I miss truth. I miss uh, being able to trust each other and trust people that you purchase product from and, uh, you know, have honest relationships with each other. Uh, you know, an honest relationship, when you read something, is that it's going to be provable and that it's going to be fact. Uh, an honest belief that journalism is meant to report fact and not be embedded in the middle of a terror attack. And I, I just... Uh, I think as old timers, you grieve the loss of values and honesty and trust and straightforwardness and being able to to trust what you hear and see. I say that because what I'm going to spend the rest of the show talking about is things like 
all the deception that's going online and how to for you to keep from becoming a victim. This show is brought to you by an organization called Million Kids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, Million Kids. And we normally talk about things like sex trafficking and social media exploitation. So this is a, a form of social media exploitation. What I want to really talk about is what what to do if you're being blackmailed online uh, for online content, if you're being catfished, if you're being even seduced in these romance scams. It is amazing how vulnerable, especially um, people that are in the second half of their generation, if you will, uh, of their lifespan, how easy it is for people to get seduced in or or trusting and believing because we're from the old country. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you trust your neighbor, you, you look out for each other and uh, and you don't do all this deception. But the new group, a new generation is going to grow up in a world of deep fakes. We're going to talk about deep fakes here and what to do and what they look like and what is going on there. That you look and you see something online and it's not real at all. And there, there, it almost feels like there's as much effort online for being deceptive or changing reality than there is from just sharing the the truth. I believe the shortest distance between two points is that straight through point where you're just honest with each other, and you know you you be fair and and take care of each other and try to do what's right. But those days are gone for this generation. They are going to live in a world without borders and a home without walls. I think I wrote a book like that, quite frankly, called Societal Shift, A World Without Borders. And they will live with millions of people they've never met. And they're going to have to learn to ferret out what is real and what is not. And they need to do that in a way that they don't get themselves hurt, they don't get their family hurt, and that it's accurate. And how we bring up that generation to do that when there's like this chasm between us of saying, you know, let's just be straightforward and honest. And just because you can alter an image, you shouldn't. Just because you can create animated video game character pornography, it is not helpful. Um, just because you can be uh, secretive and uh, uh, fraudulent with people and play a joke, we probably shouldn't do that. And so I want to talk about this thing. We're going to talk about some deep fakes and some romance scams and some revenge porn. Seems like I'm dealing more and more with that and and like that. But where it really comes down for me is that with all the technology, I believe technology isn't good or bad. Many of you hear me give the example. You can It's like a car. You can take it off to a a university and get a degree, but you can take that same car off to a strip club and get yourself in trouble. Well, we're raising a generation of kids that will have more power and more ability to be deceptive than any generation before them. Uh, you know, talk about deceptive and betrayal. And I think that's part of the problem with all of these things is that people who have been deceived feel a fierce sense of betrayal. I feel a fierce sense of betrayal when I found out that the Associated Press was part of that invasion over there, that they they went along with it. They knew about it in, in, in uh, advance, and they went along as if it was um, not about to kill many, many people and destroy whole families and hurt children. Uh, that that it was more important that they were there and get a story, even if a lot of people got murdered and hurt and uh, and physically harmed. And you feel this sense of betrayal that there's something less than straightforwardness going on. Well, that's what happens when you get involved with these things that are online that are not accurate, that are not fair, that don't have your best interests at heart. But how do we ever prepare a generation of people that believe in straightforwardness and truth to live in a world online 
where it seems like straightforward and honest is like the last value they're promoting, that it's really more fun to absolutely alter and, and denigrate others and do it for entertainment. This is Opal Singleton. We are up against that break, so stay with us. We're going to be right back. Are you tired of eating at the same old restaurants? Let me tell you about a fabulous Italian restaurant we found in Riverside, Mamma Mia's Italian Restaurant. Their caprese salad is exquisite with candied balsamic glaze. All of their sauces are special recipes using only the best olive oils. The salads are fresh and healthy. They offer a wonderful array of pastas, including shrimp scampi, capellini, bolognese, and lasagna. They're famous for their gourmet pizza, and you can order online for takeout or have a special date for dining in with family and friends. Mamma Mia's caters special occasions and hosts private events. You have to try it out. Mamma Mia's Italian Restaurant, located at 10971 Magnolia Avenue in Riverside, one block north of La Sierra on Magnolia. That's Mamma Mia's in Riverside. Be sure to tell Michael, Alex, or Joseph you heard it on AM590, The Answer. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of MillionKids.org. I believe the four most powerful words on earth are I believe in you. So we created a challenge coin that says I believe in you on one side and stand tall, you are loved on the other side. This one-of-a-kind challenge coin is a perfect gift for birthdays, anniversaries, graduation, Christmas presents, or just an anytime gift for someone you love. What a powerful message for a parent or a grandparent to give to a young person. This two-inch coin is made of polished gold. It's striking to look at, and it is priceless to hold. It is packaged in a beautiful black velvet gift box. What a great way to leave a legacy of love that will last forever. To purchase this coin, go to millionkids.org slash gallery. Each coin is $25. Go to millionkids.org slash gallery to purchase and give a legacy of love. Real estate sales in the Inland Empire are really hot. Sean and Colleen at Caldwell Banker Armstrong Properties in Riverside are proud to sponsor this show. They are the best in the Inland Empire. They're fair, honest, creative, and they care about you and your situation. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, call Sean and Colleen at 951-529-4066. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and we are talking about what happens when you become a victim, and hopefully you won't, but quite frankly, as much as everything's changing, Sooner or later, we will all become victims of either being blackmailed or catfished or seduced into some sort of interaction online that will be costly. So I wanted to take the three big ones today that might uh, apply here to the audience and just give you some ideas of what is happening and what you can do to protect yourself so that you won't be victimized. The first one I want to talk about is this new thing out called deep fakes. And deep fakes are basically a way that um, I want to say bad people, because I can't imagine a good person ever doing this, uh, use technology in a way that alters an image or a likeness of another person. And then it, you know, honestly, it can go even further than all, all can't say it altering an image <laughs> anyway altering an image it can include receiving a phone call from someone that sounds just like your child i know a couple of elderly people that have received those phone calls and it's they're just beside themselves that that their little grandchild would be being hurt so it isn't just that they alter an image they can alter a, a voice and uh, it sounds like your child pleading for help. And if you're elderly and you get that call, you know, the first thing I, I knew a lady that actually went down to the Target store to buy a bunch of gift cards to pay them off to get her, her grandchild back. Fortunately, the people at uh, Target said, wait a minute, what are you doing here? And she told them. But uh, it can be, you know, it doesn't have to be an image. It can be a sound. It can be a, a lot of kinds of alterations that you might do on live streaming. So literally, deep fake technology, as it's called, they use ad 
artificial intelligence, and it's advanced to the point where it uses voice, images, and even movements if you're doing like a Zoom or a Skype or that kind of thing in a call or a virtual meeting so it seems like it's real. So literally, I was reading here that uh, AI has tools that create synthetic media or generate content. So think about where this is going to be for our kids when you think about it. Because you and I, we use our eyes, ears to listen and to see and to make judgment. And so if you have people all over the world that can use this technology, it's all about getting you to give up your money or to compromise you so that they can begin to blackmail you. I say this because most of you know that I had a movie that I was the executive producer of called Sextortion, The Hidden Pandemic. And that was made about 18 months ago. And I was I went to a uh, release of that movie up in Bakersfield. They had a big event there where parents came. And I was very impressed with the number of people who actually showed up and and talked about what is going on there. You know, when you think about the ability of technology, we're just getting started because one of the factors is just not the advanced technology on how they can alter a voice or an image so that it's lifelike to you. But the number of people that will be able to do that is going to greatly expand. And if that doesn't put the fear of God in you, it should. You know, right now, one of the things that we are really, really struggling with as a society, and you don't hear enough about it, every now and then you get a PSA out there from the FBI. But one of the things that's happening is places like Nigeria and Ivory Coast and Pakistan and, you know, countries um, that have a lot of poor people in those countries. And now they got high-speed internet. This is what my book, Societal Shift, is all about. For the first time in history, people all over the world are receiving high-speed technology. And that allows them to access the rest of the world. And hopefully, they will use it for good. But many of them will use it to put out propaganda, just like what is happening right now with the war. The people that normally would never be able to reach our children, uh, our families, our uh, schools, now can come in and send out messages every day and tell whatever message they want to convey, whether it's true or not true. And so, and they have an entire country of very poor people. So they are, in the case of sextortion, employing their very poor Uh, kids and saying, you want to come in and play video games for a living. And these kids are living on one or two bucks a day. Who wouldn't want to do that? They can't afford a PlayStation. So they come in and they act like they're 14 year old girls and they seduce our guys on those video game chat rooms. And the next thing you know, he's either been caught on a live stream camera or he sent a photo or a video thinking this is some hot 14 year old down the street. And, you know, literally, we are allowing Nigeria in our kids' living room, our kids' bedroom. And we're just getting started. As 5G goes around the world and all of these countries are out there, they don't always play by the same rules that we think are the right rules to do. I, re- I remember I used to travel for a living and uh, in business. I was in international marketing before I got into this gig. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, uh, I remember I would go, for instance, in Paris or um, maybe in um, Tokyo. And, you know, being an American, I would get in line. Well, all these people would just come up and get in front of me. And their thinking, as they explained it to me, is we don't wait in line. You can't wait in line here. You'll starve to death. You know, that that's some sort of luxury that Americans have that they call being polite. If you want to survive in our country... You, you find a way to get to the head of the line or you're not going to get it. And it's an interesting thing because as you look at the different attitudes and cultures around the world, we are putting those right there in our kids' bedroom. And we're also giving access to our kids by those same people. 
when our kids go online, it isn't like you and I going on Facebook. If you go on TikTok, you go out to millions and millions and millions of people who can not only access your child and reply back to them, but they can actually take uh, a, a copy of your kids' Instagram uh, followers or TikTok followers and take whatever image your child has sent out, alter it and send it out to them. And that is deep fakes. Deep fakes are basically where, where you're going to see the most basic way that you can think of that is they will take the perfectly good image of someone who's not doing anything bad and they will remove that head and put it on a central body or a nude body. And then they begin to blackmail that kid. And this kid goes to school and he gets ostracized. He gets bullied. He gets beat up. And, and you know, the kid is going, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. That's not me. That's not my body. Nobody is going to believe that unless we can get out in front of it and start to teach each other that if you're going to be online, you better have empathy for your fellow man because you are next. You know, I am predicting that in three to five years, every one of us will have been a, a victim of a deep fake. You know, uh, I we see this now. I I, I can't remember which uh, group actually did it, but, but uh, one of the news groups during the uh, beginning of the war over there in Israel actually showed a different picture of a hospital claiming it was the hospital there in Gaza. And it wasn't even the same hospital. And they had no qualms with that whatsoever. They probably put in small print, you know, not the actual image or something. But how do we begin to protect ourselves with these deep fakes? Well, it's going to get crazier. Uh, what is happening here with synthetic media or deep fakes is that they can generate content and a growing percentage of what we're looking at is not authentic. I want you to know these words are coming from the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. They say, thanks to AI tools, the great synthetic media otherwise generate content. A growing percentage of what we're looking at is not authentic, and it's getting more difficult to tell the difference. I couldn't agree more. So how do we prepare ourselves so that we don't become victimized and prepare our kids so they do not become victimized? And, and even more importantly, how do we teach our children to be empathetic and look out for each other when they do become victims? Uh, if uh, every child that's going to be victimized has to change schools, we're not going to have any schools left. It's going to become a big, big rodeo going on out there, everybody going around. But even more important, how do we keep our elderly from sending money to protect their grandchildren? We need to have some strong conversation about deep fakes because it's not going away. It's just getting started. We're up against that break. See you in a minute. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. 
Million Kids Takes Checks and Credit Cards, Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and we're talking about deep fakes right now. And we're talking about online scams and how to recognize them and where it's going and how to protect yourself. So a deep fake is basically using artificial intelligence. It can modify an image. It can modify a voice. It can actually create something that doesn't actually exist. And that's really where I'm going with this because not only will our kids begin to and our grandparents and and hopefully not us will get seduced into believing something is real when it is not and then how do you prepare the kids to live in this world in this case there's something called the cybercrime support network this is a nonprofit group of individuals and businesses um, that help people who have been victimized online And it urges people to do video chats with their suitors to weed out the scammers. Well, I don't know that I agree with that. I I, uh, train on romance scams, and we'll talk about all of this. What you're saying is that um, you're starting to see people that are contacting and saying that they've done the video chat for 10 to 20 minutes with their supposed suitor, and it's absolutely sure the person was that it's sent to me. And so they're saying that that even after 10 or 20 minutes, they can no longer use that rule of, well, talk to them online and pay attention. Now, this one lady was saying, well, the head did look a little weird on the body. It did look a little bit off. But, you know, people who are on romance scams or on dating sites, they have a tendency to ignore red flags. They want to believe what they want to believe, so they overlook these kind of discrepancies. When I uh, train on romance scams, uh, one of the, the statistics that come out in that is that last year there was $1.3 billion lost in romance scams. And that's because people go on those dating sites, they hook up in a hookup room, and they want to believe what they want to believe. And, you know, the stories go on and on and on. That's a whole other discussion about what to watch out for. But the number one thing to watch out for is that, you know, they will say that they're they're not available. No matter what you do, they're not available. They're on an oil rig somewhere or they're in the military or they're off in Siberia somewhere, but they're gonna they're gonna come and seduce you shortly. One of the things I would encourage you to do right off the bat with you and your family And I don't think that it's any time too soon to do it. Tonight would be a good night to do this, is get a code word between you guys. Make it simple. Even the youngest kid can remember and know. But get a code word that only you share between you. And that way, is there any doubt that you're talking to your child or that your child is sending you a text or an email or something like that? that you can know that is them. Pick something easy to remember, something simple. It doesn't have to be written down. You know, uh, um, it's no longer accurate, so I can say, but in my case, in my previous life that I had, um, the code word was Barkley, happened to be a cat that we had. But it was just a word that each of us would know when in doubt that you are, in fact, talking to who you're talking to. So... What happens here on these deep fakes is that they create these images and you just don't know who they are and and, uh, like that, but you want to believe. And that can happen with voice or or, uh, your photo. And we're just getting started on this. But one of the things that I would say to you is if you think that you're talking to someone that you don't know that you're being caught up in it, the first thing to do is get off the whole thing. Yeah, and the same way I would I would encourage you if you're reading something, uh, you know, people who post information out there, they live on likes and and the number of contacts and reading. So quit reading them, block them, don't keep listening to them. Uh, there are there is a world of people out there printing misinformation to be able to um, you know get access to you or get your money. 
I also want to address this issue of revenge porn, because this is another thing that is happening that you're going to see more and more of. Revenge porn is usually something that you have created somewhere along your line, maybe in some lesser moment of good judgment. <laughs> so, so let's say you fell in love and you're pretty sure whatever you did, you, you wanted to memorialize it and it's going to be just between you and them. And then, you know, something goes wrong and you break up. And now you have uh, video, photos, whatever they are out there. And you're you're saying to yourself, you know, well, they're a decent person. They won't misuse it. But suddenly those photos show up online or the video shows up online and someone is threatening you. Now, this started and you'll blame yourself because you allowed those photos to be taken. Sometimes they want money. Sometimes they want to meet up. Sometimes they want more photos. Now, this depends on whether you're a minor or an adult in how you handle this. But if you're an adult, what I would say is that the first thing you do on there is if you think it's your partner, of course, you, you can try to come to some sort of agreement that they stop it. But if they're already posting it, they are not the person you thought they were. And this is not going to go well. The first thing you do is block it. Now, they'll come back under other names and it'll pop up like that. Um, go on to the, uh, if this is something pornographic, go on to the app company and, you know, report them as being a violator of your privacy and violator of the of their standards and ask them to take it down and uh, pay attention. If they want money, never, ever, ever, never give them money. Never. You will never be able to give them enough money. And while I'm talking, I'm talking to adults, I hope, out there. But if you have a young person in your life, especially if they're on Discord or one of the big games that are out there on those gaming platforms, and they get seduced into sending a photo or a video and somebody wants money, have the conversation today that there is a huge movement around the world of people that are either using a deep fake, meaning the head of one person and the body of something else, or an actual photo that the young person sent or that you sent, and now they want money. And it's important that we have conversations with our kids that you will never have enough money for them to stop. How much is enough? Is it $50? Is it $250? $2,500? 25000 2 million? How much is it going to take for them to stop? The minute you start sending them money, your life will turn to living hell because there will never be enough money. Now, will they post those photos? Probably. There's more than a 50% chance they will. But what you need to do is report that to the app company. If you're an adult, I, I would say either way, adult or child, go to the police department and file a report. And let them know that this is happening. If you have any kind of evidence, don't delete it. I know those are embarrassing photos, but don't delete them. Screenshot them, in fact, so that you have backup, maybe on another uh, camera or another uh, phone somewhere, and go to the police department. Block them right off the bat. Another thing that you can do, especially if... Uh, you think that if you think this is really, really serious and it's about an adult that did this willingly, they can contact a private investigator. We happen to have an investigator that works with me and kids. Um, I'm not making any money off this referral. I want to make that clear, but highly recommend her. Her name is Linda Berg Herring at 714-313-7371. Or you can write to me at opal, O-P-A-L, at meandkids.org and I'll give you that information. But that uh, person has telephone equipment so that they can, especially if you're an adult, where they can run all your social media, see where it's showing up, run all your uh, connections and see where they're showing up. One of the things you need to know is a lot of times these people that are posting these kinds of things online are dead serious. And you want to protect yourself. You know, if, you, if possible, go stay with somebody uh, until you can get to the bottom of it. Take it directly to the police department and take all the evidence that you can take. I don't care how embarrassing. They have seen it all before. Trust me. 
But if somebody is willing to go online and blackmail you, especially if this is someone that you've actually been in personal contact with or had a prior relationship, you know, law enforcement needs to be involved in that. So block them, never meet up with them, never give them money and take the evidence and go down to the police department and fill out a report. This is against the law to blackmail somebody, even if you made those photographs together. Now, if this is a child, you need to do not stop, go, but go immediately and go to the police department and accelerate this because your child and quite frankly, your life could be in danger. And the police understand that and they will take it very, very seriously. My name is Opal Singleton. This is coming up at against this break, so one more, and uh, we'll be right back. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. I want to tell you about a book I wrote called Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. It's all about how predators access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people using social media, online gaming, video chat rooms. Technology is changing at the speed of light, and we have to understand how to keep our kids safe from predators. So you can get this book by going to www.meandkids.org. It's $16, I'll sign it, and I'll ship it to you personally. We hope that you will order this book, educate yourself about how to keep our kids safe in this day of changing technology. Join us each Saturday for our radio show at Exploited Crimes and Technology at 3 o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. Custom Service Systems, a proud supporter of Million Kids, is a family-owned and operated commercial cleaning company servicing the Inland Empire and surrounding areas since 1974. CSS takes pride in their ability to maintain the business facilities they serve and their long-lasting relationships with their valued clients. CSS provides a variety of cleaning systems customized to client needs, including deep cleaning and disinfectant to be COVID-19 compliant. From basic office cleaning to windows and floors, CSS will clean up your mess so you don't have to stress. Custom Service Systems cares about families and communities and wants to give back. Custom Service Systems are proud supporters of Million Kids to keep kids safe from predators. If you need the best cleaning services for your business or corporation, contact Custom Service Systems at cssclean.com. Again, cssclean.com or call 951 781 93 That's 951-781-9345. You will know you found the best. Custom Service Systems. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Let me tell you about my friend Doris Anderson at Remax Realty in Upland. She is amazing. She's kind, she's patient, but she listens. And she's informed and she will help you with your real estate transaction in a way that works for you. Doris, in full disclosure, often supports the work of me and kids because she cares about young people. But she knows how to analyze a market, how to market a property, and how to find just the right transaction for both buyers and sellers. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in income property, contact Doris Anderson at REMAX Realty 951-733-8899. That's 951-733-8899. 951-733-8899. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and I've been sharing with you about revenge porn and also a little bit about deep fakes and artificial intelligence. Revenge porn, I I kind of lump this together with the deep fakes because a lot of times what will happen when somebody gets uh, pornography that was real live pornography, they can alter it. And especially if it's online. And so sometimes you have cases of of, uh, deep fakes along with revenge porn. But I want to give you some ideas about what to do to protect yourself. If you're being blackmailed online, the first thing you should do, because you're rattled, you're all upset, you 
you feel guilty. You may have made that photo yourself, or maybe they altered it, and so you feel betrayed by that individual. And you go through a, a wild swing of emotions when you become victimized by someone that you thought you knew and someone you thought you could trust and somebody that you actually thought you cared about and maybe still do, but you can't believe this is really happening. Number one thing is stop all communication immediately. I would recommend that uh, you block them, but do not go on and say, if you don't stop this, I'm going to go to the police. Don't bother giving them a warning. That is not helpful to do that. If they want money, do not, do not send money ever under any circumstances on these kinds of things. Even if they're telling you they have your grandchild or, uh, you know, whatever, do not send that money. Uh, Do not keep sending photos. That's the typical kind of response by a pedophile, especially with our kids. They want more photos. That's because they're selling these photos to pedophiles in the dark web. And regardless of how many threats, you're never going to give them enough photos and you're never going to give them the kind of photos they want. If you give them one that's off the shoulder or maybe topless, then they want one that's even more so. And there's no end to it. You cannot win that by trying to placate them by meeting their needs. The next thing they may want is to meet up. Meet up with me. I'll give you the photo and we can talk about it and we can be friends again. Never, never, if they're willing to try to blackmail you, this is not somebody you should ever be with in public or alone with in any means whatsoever, because if they're willing to take it that far, then your life can easily be in danger. So don't ever, and I hope you have the same conversation with your kids, because I can't tell you the number of kids that think they're going to just go out and meet up with this guy and just talk with him. And he's going to be really, really cool and think they're wonderful and they're not going to hurt him. And who knows, he might give those photos back. That is like the longest shot on earth. It is not going to happen. If you block access to the suspect, beware. Predators will most often change their identity. So you may block them, but suddenly you have a whole new friend with a whole new name and a different address. And you won't be aware that, in fact, it is the same person just using a different app or a different name, a different persona, and suddenly they will come into your life and they will look like your new best friend. The other thing I would show you is go out immediately and change all your passwords, all of them, and make them very, very difficult to do. And, you know, because this is really what's going to happen. They they begin, depending on how well they know you, they can begin to go in and penetrate your accounts. Do not delete the communication. You know, I know that there's a, a desire to do that because you're now greatly embarrassed, but don't do that. In fact, screenshot it. We've talked about that. So pay attention to that, that you are careful because your first instinct is, If I delete it, then nobody will know. Well, trust me, there are ways of rebuilding it. Um, Do not click on emails or links that come to you after that, especially if you're not familiar with it, especially if it's coming out through email, especially if it has an attachment. Uh, There's all kinds of software out there, phishing software. And if they can send you what looks like a an innocuous kind of a communication just to get you to click on it, they can once again get back into your life. Uh, You may want to change your uh, actual email address uh, to if it it becomes absolutely serious. Um, Black males have multiple identities. I can't tell you how much uh, that is true. And I've seen case after case after case where they think they're to the end and they're okay. And then suddenly this new person pops up and they say everything you want to hear and you trust them, but you're getting betrayed all over again. The next thing I would say is go to law enforcement. This is against the law, what they're doing. And especially if the victim is a minor, that is absolutely huge. 
Uh, we see cases where people get 25, 30 years in prison for doing online exploitation of minors. So don't be afraid to go to law enforcement, even if you as an adult are the victim. You know, if you're a victim of a romance scam, even if you're a, a grandma or grandpa, do not send them money. Do not think it's going to go away. A lot of people feel like they have to keep sending money because they already sent money. You know, if you are t- sending money to someone you met online that is not part of your physical day-to-day encounter, you know, go. you're being scammed. I mean, they have all kinds of stories going on out there. And I know you think you're going to be loved, but you need to, if a relationship online entails the exchange of any kind of assets, money or anything else, then it's not a relationship and take care of that. I also would caution you to take care of your personal safety. You know, if you uh, don't be afraid to report, tell other people if this is happening with the details, just in case something should happen to you. But if you live alone, you know, maybe you can stay with a friend for a bit. But take care of your personal safety. Do not post about the issue or suggest any future activities where someone might arrange to meet you in public. All of these seem like they're over the top, at least, maybe to you. I don't know. But we have entered a whole new era. We've entered the era where we can no longer feel betrayed because somebody was dishonest with us. Uh, I still remember how I felt when I found out about Associated Press. Uh, they used to be the the champion of uh, good reporting. And to find that out, people of uh, an older generation, we kind of say to ourselves, who do we trust anymore? Who do we believe? Well, we are going to have to get tough and get sharp and understand that if you're living in a world without borders, You're going to have at least half of the news presented to you is not going to be honest. And the people that you're meeting online, you need to protect yourself from. And that is very, very true for our children. And, you know, now more than ever, they need leadership from us. We need to put aside all this craziness that we used to have, where you could just look at something and know that this person is going to be straight with me and I can trust them. When you have these online relationships now with all this capability of chat, BT and BPT and all of the AI and all the stuff that goes on, we have entered a world where it just won't be honest and it won't be like we see. And I I think that's an important conversation to have with your children that, you know, reread the article. What is it really saying? What is their goals? What are their personal biases? How much of this can be true and be proven? We're going to have to teach ourselves and others on how to look for truth and look for honesty and be able to evaluate what we're seeing and what we're hearing, because this is going to get a lot more complicated. I believe that with all my heart. I was saying to my pastor the other night that I think I lived in the best time in America where people just looked at each other and found the good in each other and they put their arms around each other and they find ways to support each other. And as I see the world dividing up into their far corners of what they are saying and believing, I say to myself, now more than ever, the greatest gift that we can give our children and our grandchildren is this conversation about having our own values, having truth as a value, being able to discern truth, to understand what is happening, and to understand that in a world of technology, there are millions of people out there that want to influence you one way or the other, but that may not have anything to do with who we are. If we're going to live online, we better know who we are and what we stand for, and we better have our, our values solidly in place so that we're not easily persuaded into something that we absolutely would not agree with. Well, folks, we're to the end of the show. I so much appreciate each and every one of you that support us financially and that follow us. Put your arms around your family this week. We all need love. We're going into Thanksgiving. Let's be grateful for all that God gave us. See you next Saturday at 3 o'clock. 
This message is all about Million Kids, the organization that helps locate missing kids throughout Southern California and educates to keep kids safe from predators. Million Kids educates school administrators, teachers, parents, and teenagers how predators identify a potential victim and the methods they use to recruit innocent kids. BMW of Riverside is a proud supporter of Million Kids. Visit BMW of Riverside at the Adams Street exit off the 91 freeway or click bmwofriverside.com.